This week at Lebanon Row, we are talking about prayer. And that's a large subject. <laughs> yes. And we have about eight minutes. But uh, we're going to talk about a, a specific aspect of that. And this is Adam Fawn. And as always, we're here with J.D. Buckner. And glad to be back with you this week. And J.D. came up with a topic this week. And so, J.D., I'm going to turn this over to you and let you talk about an aspect of prayer that you wanted to discuss this week. All right. Well, we all wonder about prayer, especially if you're like my family and maybe you've had some sort of tragedy or something come into your family. It always makes you wonder, what exactly does prayer do? Can prayer change the future? Can it change the will of God? Uh, is it... Uh, is it important to pray or does it just help us or does it help the situation? All those types of questions really arise in the minds of many Christians. And we should always start out, we know the Bible encourages us to pray. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Uh, there's all kinds of examples of prayer. Even Jesus prayed. <laughs> Uh, so uh, lots of things we know that we should pray and uh, maybe a verse that touches on this is James chapter 5 and one that you recognize verse 16 confess your sins to one another pray for one another that you may be healed the prayer of a righteous man has great power in its working or I believe the old King James says the effectual yeah. fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much yeah. That's, but, that's it. But what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, you're asking a great question because I, I've heard it asked this way before that if God knows the future, then what's the point in praying about something if He's already decided how the future is going to be? Absolutely. And that does bring up one of these big points about the topic of prayer, which for time's sake we can't really delve into. Uh, like Adam started out, this is a really deep subject. When you talk about the future as we recognize it, as finite beings mm -hmm. uh, consumed with time, you know, we began our time here and we'll end our time here and go on to experience a world without time, okay. eternity. Uh, but for us now, we can't really understand that concept. Our mortal minds won't get it. But God doesn't live in time. So for Him, it's not the same. You know, future. What does future mean to God when the Bible says He is the one who was and is and is to come in the in the book of Revelation? He sees the end from the beginning, yeah. as Isaiah puts it. That's my favorite. And our minds just go... <laughs> <laughs> you've, been, you've been near my office a little lately. <laughs> so the future is something that we could discuss a lot, but it does have to do with prayer. What we see in the Bible is there are some examples of people changing the will of God, if you will, mm -hmm. through prayer. Maybe some of those that don't just jump right out on us that I happen to think of off the top of my head was in the Old Testament. I can remember several times, or at least a couple of times, when God wanted to destroy the children of Israel. Yeah. But Moses stepped Moses. in, and you know he didn't pray to God like we pray today, but it was certainly a petition a uh, petition prayer, you know, yeah, yeah. please don't destroy them. And what did God do? He stayed his hand. Yeah, he relented. Uh, let's see, the King Hezekiah, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, he was about to die. I asked, so, asked for more years. Yeah, yeah, and God accepted that. Yeah. Other one, uh, not a straight prayer, but a petition was Abraham when God wanted to destroy Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the one that I was thinking of. Yeah. But basically the bargaining story. Yeah. <laughs> if they're 50, if they're 40, if they're yeah. 30. And finally, was it 10? I think yeah. you know, if there are 10 righteous people in this city, don't do it. And, and God says, if I can find if I can find, and he goes the same number. So right. I went down, if I find 10, I'll leave the city as it is. It makes me think of a car auction. I know it. <laughs> I know it. That's, one of the, that's one of the strangest stories in Scripture to me, yeah. that, that bargaining. But we see that it changes. So I guess the question that we should entertain for the next couple of minutes is how exactly does prayer change the situation you have any thoughts that's no, that's why i said you <laughs> that's you, a, you, you yeah. can do this it's like oh yeah. <laughs> that's right i mean even me it's an uncomfortable thing to uh to uh, talk about but in a nutshell it seems like there are two different types of what we would call the will of God. Yeah. And you hear in books and speakers, uh, one of my friends, Joel Shoemaker, or uh, Serge Shoemaker, excuse me, he spoke on this at the Fried Hartman Lectures a couple of years ago. And um, 
One type of will of God is what they would call the circumstantial will of God. It's based on circumstances, and circumstances can change. Mm -hmm. uh, the other type is what they would call the ultimate will of God, and this is something that cannot change. For example, if, if God is laid it in stone in the Bible, that can't change. Uh, the matters of salvation, yeah. you must put on Christ in baptism and follow His teachings faithfully for the rest of your life if you want to go to heaven. If you reject God and His will and His Son, then you will be condemned. Those things are ultimate wills of God. And unfortunately, we can't pray enough to get God to change those things. God, I know that I've been wicked all my life and I've never obeyed you, but please save me anyway. Yeah. You know, those things can't change. But sometimes with sickness and uh, things that don't affect the overall will of God and His plan for this world, those things can change, and we see that in the Bible, those, those things that we mentioned earlier. Uh, that's really the hard part for us to grasp because God does have a plan for this world, and He sees it. We don't see it, and even if He allowed us, we couldn't comprehend that total plan for all the years of man living on this, in this sphere, on this globe. Uh, and... God's plan is a good plan mm -hmm. for a world that has made mistakes and has fallen. God has a great plan for us. And even though we can't see it, we can pray and sometimes He might change it as long as it doesn't interfere with His ultimate plan. Yeah, and the ultimate in that, really, that's the word ultimate. <laughs> ultimate. <laughs> in that really, in my mind, is Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, here was... Yes, he's God in the flesh, but he was in the flesh. And, and here's a man bearing that ultimate will of God, but praying, I wish this could change. Yeah, yeah I, I wish I, I didn't have to go through with this action this to, bring about, from you know, to bring about that ultimate will, but the ultimate will had to be there. That, that action, and I, that's, I know that's making the cross sound like it's not that big of a deal, but that action was part of that ultimate will. It could not change because if it did, then God's not God. Because he couldn't bring his will about. He's not really all-powerful or all-knowing or all those you know, phrases or, or descriptions of, of God. But the, I think in that prayer, you see both of these types of will. If there is a circumstance that could change, God, please make it happen. Yeah. But it can't. In that situation, it cannot change because it really, it, it really was the ultimate will of God. Yeah, absolutely necessary. If we were to be saved, that that had to happen. And... You, I love to see that how Jesus, who could have called 10,000 angels, he submitted to God's will. And maybe that's a lesson for us. Yeah. How matter, and I'm not trying to be callous, you know, yeah. not trying to be callous. How matter, we may just desire so strongly for something to change. We have to be willing to submit to God's will yeah. and uh, whatever his answer may be. It also reminds me of uh, that parable, I believe, was in Luke, of the judge mm -hmm. who the woman just kept pestering the him. Persistent for, will. Yeah, for a lack of a better, or for JD's term, I like to say she pestered him. <laughs> uh, the revised Buckner yeah, translation. Yeah. And he, you know, he finally granted her request. And I know that may teach us a lot, but for me, uh, it lets me know that if I pray, uh, the more I pray to God, uh, the more likely he is to hear my request, I guess. Yeah. I don't really know, grant my request. And yeah. it, but I'm not saying, well, it, it, he didn't say yes because you didn't pray enough. That's right. You know, that's right. obviously that's not the point of the parable, but there's something there to think about. And, and it is interesting, too, to see people, like you mentioned, who, you, especially when they go through a tragedy where they have prayed that something changed here, someone get better or a relationship be fixed or you know, a job situation, whatever it is. It is amazing to me, and I don't want to sound callous either or cold, but it, it's amazing to hear them years later. You know, maybe God didn't say yes to that request. Maybe that person didn't get better or that relationship did fall apart or whatever it was. And in the moment, you know, they'll tell you, I don't understand this. But years later, nearly always, they say, I still don't fully understand it, but I'm seeing it differently now. Be yeah. Because they're, they're not seeing God's picture fully, but they're seeing how this could be just a 
tiny slice, you know, it is a tiny slice, but it, you know, just a little, little slice of something bigger than that moment, as, as difficult as it is. And it is difficult. Right. Uh, but they're seeing more than just that decision or that relationship. And that's important to remember, too, that, that there is an eternal part to this. You know, and, and and that may not help in the moment if you're struggling. I know that probably didn't help <laughs> that, that little yeah. that little part of this, but years later, it is amazing to see people begin to see with more persp- a longer perspective. Is probably a better word there. Yeah, judgment and eternity are the great balance of all of these questions that we have on on the earth. Yeah. Everything will be balanced out on that day and from that time on. Yeah. But there are some things we do know for certain. God loves us. He cares about us. He knows the future. Uh, It's not necessarily predetermined, but like we said, He lives outside of time. He wants good for us. And He will take care of us, especially in times of need. He wants us to pray to Him. And that prayer has an effect. That's right. That's right. Well, I appreciate you coming up with the topic for today. We 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 plan these uh, literally, you know, short short time ahead. But but uh, we try to rotate weeks basically, and and this is interesting. And obviously, hopefully, it it helps some further study because yeah. it's it's a deep deep subject and something that we will never fully understand. But. In our 15-part series, <laughs> no, <laughs> that is not next week. <laughs> next week is not part two, uh, but uh, it is something we all wonder about, and just to be able to talk about it has to help because it, you know, it lets your mind think that there is something bigger than just the moment, but that God is in control is really what, what, what helps. Just a couple of very quick announcements. We're already over time a little bit, and that's okay, because this is deep stuff. Uh, one is uh, next Thursday, not tomorrow night as we're recording this, but next Thursday, April the 11th, is our Teacher's Appreciation Dinner. And for our teachers who have not RSVP'd, I don't know how you pronounce that, resvipid uh, we, we uh, ask you to do that to the office, uh, to RSVP contact the the office to let us know if you'll be attending. And also this Sunday night, uh, following our services, there's going to be a brief uh, slideshow or video of uh, pictures from Lads to Leaders. Shea Kofer is putting that together of our children and their involvement at Lads to Leaders. So all of our uh, folks who come on Sunday night, hope you plan on staying. I think he's planning on just being about five minutes long, but uh, excited about about that. We hope this has helped you this week, and we look forward to being back with you next week. But until then, this is This Week at Lebanon Road.